I haven't been to the top of Everest. I don't have any Olympic gold medals. And, you know, I, I, uh, I, I make beer. And <laughs> usually that gets a standing ovation, tough crowd. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But it's, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that a lot of times when I do an event like this, I come in early and I listen to the crowd and I see people look at the program and they go, beer guy. What the hell are we going to learn from the beer guy, right? That's a common theme, and, and uh, we're going to get back to that. I want to put a pin in that thought. Why the heck the beer guy? Because uh, if I take a step back to uh, what I did before starting the brewery, this is my buddy Jeff and I. We met in Kabul, Afghanistan. At that time, yeah, it was, it was uh, secret clearance level tactical communication networks that we built for the U.S. Marine Corps, the Canadian troops. Anybody NATO-wide, basically, that needed to talk quietly, Jeff and I would go in and uh, design and implement these types of networks and uh, try to get home to our respective families. I do have a wife and three sons who hate what I do in Afghanistan for a living. In fact, I can't even tell them what I do. I live in this world where it's, love you, honey, see you in eight months, going to Afghanistan, and you can't answer the phone, you can't talk about where you are, what you're going, so when the phone would ring and I'd see it's my wife, I'd be like, what are you, the Taliban? I can't answer this phone call. This is, it's, everything is secret clearance, I can't do anything except this job, and three little boys at home uh, living in that life, it's, it's tough. You, you do get shot at, there's bombs that go off around you, it's a, it's a horrible thing. And, uh, and that's where I met my business partner. He lives three blocks away from me in Calgary, and we met uh, as roommates in Kabul. I think that's how most businesses start, right? <laughs> and, uh, and, and you know, this, this type of job is, is insane, but it brings unique people together. And Jeff and I are super nerds, and, and really, our friendship budded over us trying to out-geek each other. And it actually didn't start with beer, it started with coffee. And he said to me one day, I'm so into coffee, it's unreal. And I'm like, well, let me stop you right there because I'm so into coffee, I bought a commercial coffee roaster from Italy, shipped it over, I changed all the electrical and PID temperature controllers and even a comms port so I can access my coffee from outside the network and he's like, okay, shut up, you win. We'll go to your, we'll go to your house for coffee. Barbecue was another one. I compete in competitive barbecuing, so I trenched and ran some conduit and Cat6 cable and encrypted my pits so you can't hack into my ribs. And, 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 It'll even tweet you and let you know dinner's at six o'clock because there's a probe in the ambient air of the pit, one in the meat, and I designed an algorithm that looks at the differential of those set points and lets you know when the ribs will be ready, right? Just nerdy stuff. But I'd say the, the model was that Jeff and I uh, was if you could just get into a hobby, it's, if it's worth doing, it's worth going way, way, way too far. And that's what we did with beer. And so, you know, this is just a little back, you know, backyard tool shed home brewery. We went to our local brewery, Big Rock, and said, can we buy some kegs? And they said, no. So I said, well, that sucks. Now I've got to steal them. And uh, I, I did. I, I had a getaway driver and everything, stole some kegs. And uh, that only came back to bite me when, you know, all of a sudden the media said, well, we want to see the original tool shed. Once tool shed turned into something great. And I thought, I got stolen goods back there. But we built this little thing just to you know, foster that type of hobby that we love. The hobbies were always about bringing good people together, sharing good times, and having just something to share good stories over. And that's what beer is. You know, it's, that's, that's what we recognize about the coffee and the barbecue. We were always about good people, sharing good stories, and having good times together. And when you're making good beer, you realize no one gives a rip about coffee and ribs. Beer is the thing that brings people together. And that's the kind of the, how it starts. You think, well, I hate going back to Afghanistan. What if I could do this for a living? This would be the greatest thing ever if we could quit our jobs and make beer forever, right? Sounds good, but I got a mortgage and a wife and three kids and I pay these bills and that middle-aged responsibility. This is the entrepreneurial journey that I think everybody starts to go through. That drama of responsibility versus going after the dream, right? And I could justify all day, I gotta show my kids that I gotta go after it and take chances and risk it in life, but at the, at the end of the day, my wife hates beer. <laughs> she hates everything about it. So I can't go in the house and say, honey, hear me out. What if we quit our good paying government military job and make beer in the tool shed? <laughs> so, so we didn't have that conversation. <laughs> yeah, I just quit <laughs> and I went home. The conversation that was actually, okay, honey, I love you. We don't make money anymore. We make beer. <laughs> she did not think that was funny at all, but this became, this became um, something that was so incredible because, we, of course, we treated it like any hobby. We turned it into a lab. 
it, to the point where when my wife first saw it, she broke out crying. And, and I, you know, I thought she was thinking I was going to be an alcoholic or something, but she says, you just take everything too far. Like, I don't know what this is, but she says, if you're making meth, we have to get divorced. And yeah, because yeah, it did look like a lab back there. Yeah, but, uh, but the thing is, the thing that's so crazy about it is when we got started, um, we quit our jobs and we went after this dream. We didn't know at the time that what we were trying to do was illegal in our province. So anybody ever quit their job to do something and then found out it's illegal? <laughs> Market research next time is what I'm told. Yeah, but uh, so, uh, so yeah, that's a horrifying thing. Uh, to put it in perspective, the law that was in our province was uh, uh, you had to show the government that you could brew 500,000 liters of beer a year or more before you could even apply to be a brewery. This is Alberta I'm talking about. This is where the barley grows. <laughs> where do you go if you want wine? You go to where the grapes grow. This is where the barley grows and we're not allowed to brew right here. Insane. Now, I only have 20 minutes. I'd go for 20 minutes talking about how insane it is that this is almost something that we, we've become accustomed to. I would say Canada-wide, this concept of we have a beautiful natural resource that we don't allow to prosper in our own province, our own cities, in our own country. We ship it off to other countries and buy the finished product back at a premium. All the best breweries in the world use Canadian barley. It's the best. And we buy those beers back at a premium instead of allowing companies like ours to get started in our own province right like 15 minutes away from where the barley grows. So this, this really started to define what Toolshed would be. We, we sat down in our Toolshed one day, Jeff and I, and said, we got to make some commitments. We have to say, number one, we're never going to plan for anything but total success. And number two, we're never going to stop until we achieve it. That's what we committed. We didn't even know what that meant at the time. But here we are against a pretty big brick wall and saying, what do we do? It's illegal. It's illegal to do what we're trying to do. And so we found out that uh, actually, although we couldn't brew in the province, we could import beer. Insane to me that we could import beer that uses Alberta barley, just couldn't brew there. And also, just so you know, Lanny McDonald has a brewery. It's not in Toronto. It's not in, in Calgary. It's in the United States. So even people with millions of dollars in influence couldn't get over this law. And if Lanny can't do it, what the hell am I? I mean, I'm a ginger, but I have no mustache. I have no money. I am not Lanny McDonald, right? He has all the money. I, and we made good money in Afghanistan. I just spent all of it on friggin' barbecues that tweet you. <laughs> so I got no money. But we said we got to disrupt this way of thinking. If nobody else could figure it out, at the time there was about 120 breweries in BC, 150 here in Ontario, Calgary had two. Big Rock and Wild Rose, 12 province wide. So we said, how about this, can we be uh, an importer? They said, no problem, we can import beer. We got our license to import beer, took all that beautiful barley, shipped it out of the province to British Columbia, drove 12 hours out to a brewery out in BC, out in Vancouver, brewed our beer there, drove back home across the border and imported our own beer back into the city. Insane, right? It was ridiculous, but I, it took a year of, and 600,000 kilometers on my nice Toyota Tacoma, but uh, driving out to brew, driving back, driving out. But all the while when I was back in Calgary, going to the media, talking to you know, people in the street, telling them, we're not just trying to get our friends drunk with this brewery. I mean, we are, but also, <laughs> What this represents is economic development in this province and in this country. What barley contributes to in this world is unbelievable. And so for us to say, look how many jobs are created in this industry. Every dollar you spend on local craft beer contributes $1.12 to the economy. We had all these great reports. It just didn't work for the government to listen to us. So we went to the media. I went to the CBC. I went to CTV News. I went, ah, man, I learned about social media. I went to newspapers. And I started singing and yelling and screaming about this beautiful province around us, these prairie farms, this barley. And what happened was people started to see this authentic and genuine passion for something much bigger than just my company. It was a collaborative approach to saying, it's the whole industry that needs to grow. And a year of doing that, we, uh, we finally, December 2013, uh, the, the AGLC in Alberta relented and said, no more minimum brewing requirement. Congratulations, Toolshed, they said. So we, we get to brew. Oh, thank you. That's amazing. I appreciate that. The neat thing is, now there's 100 breweries in the province. They're all hiring uh, locals. And you know, it's a, it's a great thing to have accomplished, not even close to getting past the hurdles. Now we get a building, right? Because now we've got the laws changed, should be easy. Go to the bank, get a couple million bucks, right? 
Is there any bankers in the room I should ask before we go on to the next stage? It's about to get dark in here. Yeah. No, I won't say what bank, but we went to our bank that we had been with since we were kids, and they laughed in our faces. Because who the hell am I, right? I'm some random IT idiot running around homebrewing and, uh, and saying we're going to make this great brewery. So of course banks don't believe that you're going to pull it off. This cash flow crunch, I think, hits pretty much any business that gets going. So OK, screw the banks. They actually, the meeting that we went to, the first meeting with my bank, they said, a brewery? Well, that's adorable. They used the word adorable. That's it's like, run along, you little rascals. A brewery, <laughs> shaking their hair, go on, all right? So okay, screw the banks, we'll go to investors, because I watch Dragon's Den, and in, right? Investors believe in the person, not just the, the business plan, right? No, that's all BS too. The <laughs> investors say, have you done this before? No, I haven't, I've lived in Afghanistan for five years, so no, no money for you. What Toolshed is still to this day is, is uh, 10 good friends and family members that believed in us. That's, that's the burden of what all in actually means when you go after a, a dream and you go after a business. I've got people, my buddy Chuck the firefighter, who I said no at first, because you're not supposed to t mix friends and money, right? Well, Chuck the firefighter says, man, I got $50,000 to my name, but I'm getting married this month, so I can only give you 40. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? And I'm his best man. I can't get up on the stage and say, all right, congratulations, guys, you're married, and then go take his life savings. <laughs> but I did. Yeah, that's, that's what we are, and, and the reason that that's so important is that it's such a burden of responsibility, but it really shows you what is all in. That's the kind of all in that gets you into your bed at night at 3 a.m. sobbing, bawling at 3 a.m. because you don't, you don't want to ruin the people's lives around you. We are 10 people. All in for poker is a joke. All in for me is a joke. I'm, I'm, of course I'm all in. It's my business. But when you're all in with everyone you love around you, with their all in, that's 3 a.m. crying in your bed at night. Um, I was saying earlier to Tammy, where's Tammy? I have this entrepreneurial pillow that I cry into because my wife's trying to sleep. She doesn't want to wake up to be crying and get stressed and stay up all night. So I cry quietly into my little entrepreneurial pillow. We were talking about marketing that, so yeah. <laughs> yeah but, uh, but no, that's the thing is, is this picture is important to me because it represents the day we got the keys to this building, but it also re represents the day that I had saved myself out of three foreclosures we were deep in it. You can't pay the bills. You, you know, you're paying for deposits on buildings and, and equipment trying to get your dream built. And I'm on the phone in this picture. My wife is talking to me. She's furious that there's no money in the account. She's trying to take the kids to volleyball practice. There's, we had 65 cents left to our name. Nothing. Mortgages are in foreclosure. And you're just saying, I got I to gotta pull this off. I've raised enough, as much money as I could through investors and through bankers. And I'm a half a million dollars short of living. So earlier today, I think it was sold you know, innovation or die, and then he said, well, you won't really die. Yes, you will. <laughs> I was going to die if I couldn't find half of a million dollars with no equity to give away, no debt to be able to raise. Banks do not lend to you when you're in foreclosure. I've learned that as well. And so, again, you go back to the bed and cry all night. And, and you know, these are those, those moments in business where you have to think disruptively, but you got to think, like, I'm not Netflix. I'm not going to start making major motion pictures and win Oscars. I'm a little business that's thinking, what does disruption mean to me? And how does it impact my business in a real tangible way that other businesses can look in and, and benefit from? So at night, I went and laid in my bed and sobbed myself at 3 in the morning. And, and eventually, I had a thought. I called my business partner at 3 a.m. And, and you know he's, he's crying too. He answers first ring because he's crying in his bed. And he says, what do you got? And I said, what if we had 100 people and we charge them $5,000 a piece and we give them beer for life? Jazz hands. <laughs> That's all I got. I don't have a brewery yet to pitch. I got nothing except a thought. In two years, I promise I'll have a brewery. It'll be great. I'll put your picture on the wall. You'll love it. But I really need $5,000 right now. And, uh, and you know what was interesting about that and why I love sharing that story is the first, some of the very first people to come through my doors and give me $5,000 for Beer for Life was Big Rock Brewery, who I started by stealing from. <laughs> yeah. they, and they came in my doors and they said, listen, this isn't about the beer. They've never once come from the beer. They said, this is about, we can't do it alone. We're all trying to raise the bar for our industries. We're all trying to make a better place to create jobs and, to, and you know, to do something incredible in our industries, but we can't do it alone. And he said, you doing this and being loud and being passionate, we need it. We need that voice to be as loud as possible collaboratively. So my competition, the big guys, I'm a bug on the window, walks through my door and gives me a check for $5,000. 
that's something else. And so that wall that we have in our brewery now that represents the, you know, now it's a nice big beautiful brewery. We've, we've pulled it off, of course. But the stories on that wall of the people that gave us $5,000 are, are in, in just unbelievable stories. It's, it's quite something. The stories, are, the stories are what makes us. So the products that we have are all based on the stories that connect us to the community around us. For those that you probably none of you have had our beer because it's mostly in Western Canada, but but people skills, this gentleman on this can, is, his name is Joe Greenwood. Hands down, no questions asked. That is the biggest asshole I've ever met in my life. <laughs> we, worked, we worked with this guy in Afghanistan. He's ex-military from New Jersey. His nickname is People Skills because of what an ass he is. This, this is actually him. <laughs> He's the worst. And the example I always give is, you know, when your wife finally does get to talk to you in Afghanistan, his wife phones one day and says, honey, you wouldn't believe it, I've lost 20 pounds. And Joe goes, oh, you'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> so that guy, this guy gets on a can of beer. That's actually, that's actually the picture we used for the can of beer. And he did try to sue us over this. Yeah, he, he sent us letters, defamation and slander. And I said, it's not defamation. You actually are an asshole. It's only defamation if you're not. <laughs> and so our lawyer says, well, you can't really tell it's him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's him. Yeah. And I said, well, you know, his name is Joe Greenwood, and we used Greenwood on the can, so he'd know it was him. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, but still, we should be. And I said, also, we wrote his name on the can. So... <laughs> Yeah, but you know, the reason that I think that's neat is we all hold the products in our hands that we choose to consume based on the stories behind them, the relationships with the people. I, I don't know what coffee you drink, but I know why I drink the coffee that I drink. Some people are the Timmy's fans, some are the Starbucks. I love Phil and Sebastian in Calgary because that's the electrical engineers that quit their day jobs in search of the perfect cup, those stories that connect us, right? So all along the way, we've been learning that it's always been about this collaboration with the community around us uh, this, this next slide here is the awards that we get in our business aren't about the beer. It's so rarely about the products that we make in our businesses. It's about those connections and those collaborative uh, you know, effects with all the companies around us. So this one's great. The top 41 was great because you know, my mother-in-law has always hated me quitting the cool job to brew beer in the tool shed. So when you win top 40, you can take that magazine to your mother-in-law and say, stick it. <laughs> That's cool. I'm on the cover. Yeah. Of course, she looks at it and goes, look how nicely dressed the other guy is. Why can't she? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know what? This is the thing that's, that's next for Toolshed. Everything that we do now, all of our advertising, everything that we try to uh, show the people uh, around us about what we do is about collaboration. That combine rolls up and down the, the Highway 2 in Calgary and, uh, and is harvesting barley. And how many people drive up and down those roads and don't know what's growing in those fields? So when you see that thing rolling, you go, holy crap, they're growing beer in these fields. It's this collaborative thing. So in closing, I, I would say I, uh, I have, we have one more new approach that we're taking to, uh, to this collaborative uh, mentality. We know now it's not about competition anymore in any industry. You gotta be able to connect. But what if you could collaborate with your competitors? Big Rock really showed us that uh, you know, back in the day by giving us that check. So our newest uh, campaign now is, you know, we've opened up the floodgates for over 100 new breweries in the province. So you could say, well, that was a stupid move to get those laws changed, 100 new competitors. But what if we started a new business under Toolshed to support every single one of them? So, that's what we've done, is, is our, newest, uh, our newest initiative is a canning facility for every new brewery in the province. So imagine if, if your board meeting, you all sat down and you said, okay, let's invest a million dollars in the competition. <laughs> You'd get fired from your business, right? But what we've done is we've said, all these new breweries that have started can't afford this equipment. It's, it's half a million dollars for this canner. So we bought four of them and we load them in trucks, and we take them to our competition, and what that's done in our industry has brought us even closer together. It's taken that mandate that Big Rock gave us to say, you gotta, we gotta do it collectively and collaboratively, and we save money for every new brewery, and we still make money doing it. It's an unbelievable way of thinking about, uh, about your industry, but, uh, but I think that's what's, uh, that's what's next for most, most businesses. So, the last thing I'll say is, you know, at the beginning when I started, and I said, why the beer guy, right? You know, I just make beer for a living and I have a blast doing it. It's a really fun industry to be a part of. But if you could think that every industry in this room or every industry that you'll represent, 
I think we sometimes need to just get our heads out of our own industries and look at the same problems we all face. We're all in a tough economy. We're all, we all have giants that should be able to crush us. Man, I got Labatt coming after me, right? And if we could get out of our own industries and think about how other industries solve the really good, good problems, that's, uh, that's why the beer guy. So thank you guys so much for uh, allowing me to chat. Enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs>